Inside the stories that affect you. This is Inside Kelloland. I'm Perry Grote. Thanks for joining us. In the coming months, Kelloland Media Group and Avera will shine a light on 15 nonprofit organizations that are making a difference in our communities. Each group has a unique mission, but together they help people from all walks of life and people of all ages, from children to senior citizens. Today we're going to take a closer look at three of the nonprofits selected to receive Avera Tradition of Caring in Kelloland grants in 2021 including the Mitchell Area Safe House. The nonprofit gives victims of domestic violence a safe place to turn while also helping empower them. We will also let you know about One Heart. The Rapid City nonprofit is just a couple of weeks away from accepting its first residence on its brand new campus. Our first guest today is with MB. The Sioux Falls organization offers everything from swimming lessons and child care to Dress for Success, which helps women looking to enter the workforce. We are now joined by Chief Development Officer Jennifer Smith Hazing. Thanks for being here, Jennifer. Hi, Perry. Thanks for having me. Well, give us an idea about what the mission of MB is. MB is all about empowering women and families, and we say that we do that to enrich lives. When you dig into that a little bit, what it means is we're here to meet our clients and our participants where they are, recognizing that each and every person defines their own success and aspiration a bit differently. So we're here to meet people on their journey and help them be their most successful self. We offer services across several program pillar areas. And again, that common thread is, is helping people be their best. Uh, many will be familiar with our women's programs. You'd mentioned Dress for Success Who Falls. That's really the start of the continuum of women's programs and services aimed at helping women be successful in the workforce and at work and at home and in life. Our second area of service is child care and school age care. Each week we serve nearly uh, 900 people in child care ages four weeks to fifth grade. And finally, we offer youth development programs and aquatics. And those are really skill building programs where we're investing in the future, teaching youth to be success successful, resilient, healthy, depending on the program. Uh, it, just to really build skills and be their best as they move it from youth into adulthood. What kind of challenges to, do women in the Sioux Falls area face, especially in a time of pandemic like this, that MB can help them with? Many. Uh, if you're entering the workforce, you've seen changes in the workforce, we're able to assist with some career coaching. That Dress for Success program, many people know, is about clothes, but it's about so much more than clothes. It's about getting people interview ready with apparel and ready for work with apparel, but also in building skills in the workforce. So if you're, if you're coming to the workforce, you're not sure how to navigate those workforce environments, and these programs like Tapestry and Women to the Workforce can assist with that. Women's Leadership Program has now uh, had more than 10 years of experience serving management level women, I would say, in the community, uh, professionals who are really looking to be their best and to advance in leadership. Uh, this has been a difficult time for women. The, the metrics really bear it out. More women have left the workforce in the pandemic. Uh, businesses owned by women are not doing as well in the pandemic as they had been a year ago. So we're just really here to keep the conversation about equity going and to help women be successful in the workforce in any number of ways. Well, this is a time when uh, women are probably having a tough time raising kids, but MB helps out with that too. Right. The, the child care and school age care services, MB believes we were one of the first when, when founded as the YWCA preschool and child care programs, one of the first really in the state. And over the decades, South Dakota has grown to become the state with the highest level of women participating in the workforce. And we know that strong child care programs um, so that children are safe and cared for securely while their parents are in the workforce mean that mom and dad or, or those adults in the household can be at work securing their family's future while the kids are somewhere safe. There's also a, a financial assistance available for it, especially to help with the child care and that kind of thing. Correct, and the youth development programs as well. Some of, some of the programs are, are free of charge, like in the women's area, good many of them. And others, there's fee scales, sliding fee scales that apply. Uh, MB is, is sincerely committed to access and equity and opportunity. Scholarship is a, is a big part of things. Uh, we're here to help people remove those barriers so they can find the programs and opportunities that they need to be successful. 
Let's talk about some of the programs available for youth. Of course, there's the Girls on the Run program. Talk a little bit about that. Girls on the Run is all about helping people be healthy, joyful, and confident. It's uh, aimed at third to fifth grade girls. Uh, and of course, there's volunteers who bring all of these programs to life. So across dozens of zip codes in South Dakota and even into Northwest Iowa, Southwest Minnesota, you'll find these programs fall and spring really aimed at, at girls communicating with one another and with themselves, understanding their strengths and building on that foundation for healthy relationships and healthy self moving forward. Of course, MB offers swimming lessons too. Tell us about that. Decades of swimming <laughs> in the MB pool. I'm sure there's lots of folks watching who learned those strokes at the MB pool. There's lessons, there's water safety instruction and lifeguarding. There's even pool memberships. If you have an interest in staying fit in the MB pool, you can head to our, our website and check that out. Those connections run deep for MB and, and we believe that, you know, empowering skills are shaped in a lot of ways, but water safety is certainly a big part of that. If you're safe in the water as a child, those are skills that stick with you for life. And as far as workforce development and learning um, how to be a, a great uh, contributor in the workforce, how many people do you know that, that started their career at work as a lifeguard? There's a great many. So there's quite a few ties, uh, even more than swimming uh, is a part of the programs there with MB Aquatics. And kids can take part in camps too? All kinds of camps. Mm -hmm. uh, babysitting camp is another similar one that I would classify quite a lot like that water safety or lifeguard instruction, teaching children about how to be great caregivers to children, but also thinking about communicating well with other adults, what it's like to be an entrepreneur and price your services is always something covered in those babysitting camps. Plus interests like first Lego League and Camp Changemaker, where we dig in each summer to see about organizations that are making a difference. Kids have an incredible heart these days, and it's really fun to be a part of shaping their experiences. How has the pandemic affected your mission? The mission has remained firm, and the mission uh, to really help women grow and families grow and be their best, that's really that tie back to the legacy established by the YWCA in the 1920s. Where we have seen some changes and challenges is in things like program delivery. We've needed to adapt, you know, the, the largest program each day impacting people is our child care and school age care program. We've needed to make adjustments to cleaning and sanitation just to keep things moving safely. As you can imagine, workforce has been a challenge in this time. Um, so we've needed to dig within our own resources and working together with, with other organizations to be sure we have the workforce we need to meet community need. We needed to innovate and take programs online in some instances where in the past we may have offered career coaching exclusively in person. Now, of course, there's a Zoom option. And the same has been true with camps and programs, any number of things. We've, we've really adapted with the times like so many organizations have so that we could be there to meet community need. Well, thank you very much for joining us for Inside Kelloland, Jennifer. And coming up next, we'll take you to Rapid City, where a brand new campus will soon open its doors to offer hope and healing. Find out how one heart hopes to make a difference when Inside Kelloland returns. Welcome back. A new nonprofit is just weeks away from opening a first of its kind campus in Rapid City. Our next guest today is Charity Doyle. She's the executive director at One Heart. Thanks for joining us, Charity. Thanks for inviting us. We're very excited to be here. Well, give us an idea. What is uh, One Heart? What is the mission of that uh, uh, nonprofit? I'd be happy to. One Heart is all about creating viable pathways out of poverty. We find in our community that um, there are a lot of services and support that can only go so far. So we, we're very good at, at making your poverty a little more tolerable for today, but we're not very good at collectively getting people out of that crisis permanently. And so that's the entire um, concept and, and initiative that went into designing this campus. Yeah, and you just moving into your new campus. Tell us about that. What, what, what did that involve? Oh, this has been a three and a half year <laughs> project. Um, it's still ongoing. Uh, we've worked very closely with the construction crew to let them know that delaying the opening of the campus and receiving guests for this transformation process was off the table. And so we've had to make some concessions on our end, but uh, we have a fully operable tower, residential tower for our guests. Our first guests are coming in January 4. The team is hustling, everything's falling into place, and uh, we are just so excited to finally bring this dream to reality. Yeah, what did it take? I mean, what, what all did it take to finally get to, to make this a reality? Uh, 
invested $23 million and lots of blood, sweat and tears <laughs> and lots of collaboration, I think would probably be the, the biggest piece of this. It wasn't um, as if it was just a couple of people trying to drive this. It was an entire community effort from the information that went into uh, defining the need to developing the concept to getting all of the, pro the providers on board. This campus isn't just about One Heart. We have 11 other nonprofit agencies on this campus at the same time um, so that we can, we can mitigate as many of those barriers that people struggling in the crisis of poverty are facing, um, help them meet basic needs so that they can actually think about rebuilding their life and think about um, the types of plans and effort and energy that would need to go into that. Um, we know that in this community, trying to get to a referral with transportation challenges and childcare challenges, as your last guest was talking about, it, it just makes it impossible. So we're trying to minim minimize and mitigate as many of those barriers as possible on this campus so people can finally make progress and, and break that cycle permanently. That's our hope. Well, how are the people referred to your uh, facility? We call them program participants or guests. We want them to know that they are very welcome. We have put a lot of effort into creating this space for them and with their input. So we just, you know, people struggling in the crisis of poverty are, are very often marginalized. Um, you know, it, it's socioeconomic uh, discrimination, if you will. So we want them to feel very included. Um, the whole campus concept was developed with inclusivity in mind. That's one of the reasons why we're so delighted it is in the heart of the community. We have a beautiful Main Street Square, a beautiful downtown. It helps people be connected to the community at large and be seen. And that's one of the things that we see um, just a common misnomer out in, in the community. If you're not related to this work or connected to this work, is that all homelessness is the same, all poverty is the same, and it's not. So the people that we're trying to reach are the thousands of invisible homeless that are struggling. As of uh, last week, I believe we had over 400 homeless children documented in our school district, plus their families. Um, and it's the people that we don't see on the streets. There are lots of resources for the visible homeless. They're just, it's very difficult for the invisible homeless. And that's where we really want to focus our effort and energy. And what do the guests learn uh, at, the, at the facility there? That's a great question, and that's very broad, Perry, because it's individualized. It's not a it's not a set curriculum or a cookie cutter plan. But what our care coordination team does is look at that person's entire life holistically. Anything and everything that needs to be rebuilt will be addressed at some point, or you know, uh, concurrently with with other case managers from all of our agency partners. Um, and the other the other piece I want to stress is it's not just about a housing plan and an income plan and job skill or education. It's also about trauma. It's also about the history that people have lived and walked that is impacting their everyday lives and trying to help impedes their ability to move forward. And so while we have them, because these are very long term uh, plans that we that, that we intend on, I think about a, a single mother who wants to provide for her family, but can't do it all. And so to be here and have these basic needs met while she finishes her education, and has those things taken care of, it's a game changer. But while they're here, we want to address all the underlying trauma if that's a factor in their lives. And oftentimes we do find that people struggling in the crisis of poverty have, have very much um, experienced different types of trauma. And so we want to just help make the, the person and the family, depending on their situation, as healthy and whole as possible and just have a completely new outlook and skills and abilities and just, you know, chance at life once they graduate. Mm -hmm. Who makes up the staff at One Heart? We have 25 incredible human beings who are dedicated to um, any, anything from case management to life safety and residential support. Um, that piece is really important because we want to make sure that the tower living experience is safe. Like I said, with trauma, we will have a lot of people that are fleeing very maybe violent or difficult situations. They need to know when they lay their head down on their pillows at night that the perpetrators in their life cannot get to them. That's going to be a very, very um, solid part of their healing plan. Um, so life safety, of course, we have our executive team. We have maintenance. I mean, we have a four acre campus and I think uh, over 80,000 square feet of building space. So we have a lot to take care of for um, for this. Um, we will. We are getting ready to hire drivers. We have a. We have the One Heart van um, to help people get access to 
the job skill or education component of their plans if transportation is a barrier for them. Um, we have a child care facility on campus that is going to be managed by the YMCA. Um, again, we have a, an urgent care on, on campus that's, that's managed by Community Health Center of the Black Hills. Um, it's just a really interesting collaborative that is going to help address anything that is going on in, in people's lives so we can really give them a fresh start. Sure. Okay, well, thank you for joining us, Charity Doyle with, like with the One Heart. Well, still ahead, we're heading to Mitchell to learn about a nonprofit that's empowering people who are the victims of abuse. Stay with us. There's more of Inside Keloland coming right up. Advocacy, education, and empowerment. Those are just three of the things offered by the Mitchell Area Safe House. Our next guest is Ashley Hobbs. She's the development director for the Safe House. Thanks for joining us, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us about what is the mission of the Safe House? Um, the mission of the Safe House is to provide emergency um, shelter support services for victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And what kind of need are you seeing now? Um, we are currently seeing um, a lot of need for um, uh, you know, being able to financial services on how to actually get in touch with other government agencies, housing, um, food, shelter, all of those main um, core things that we all need every single day. Mm -hmm. And you serve a very large area. Tell us about that. We do. We service an eight county area, which is about a 50 mile radius around Mitchell. We serve um, Davison, Aurora, Hanson, Sanborn, Douglas, Gerald, Hutchinson, and Minor County. Yeah, and serve, having such a big footprint, does that uh, present a little bit of a challenge for you? A little bit. We have difficulties. Um, you know, we have somebody full time working on rural advocacy, but to physically be there every single day, it's challenging. But um, we are hopeful that we are starting to get our mission out there and, and do a better job at communicating our needs in those counties. Yeah. And talk about some of the services you do provide. Um, we so we have two um, basically two tree parts of, of the big tree. Um, we have the Family Visitation Center and the shelter. The shelter provides emergency services, um, a 24-hour crisis hotline, parenting classes, and some education. And the Family um, Visitation Center provides uh, exchanges and a safe place to have monitored visits with the um, parent. Yeah, talk about the, the parenting classes that you offer. Sure. So we have um, just some general basic parenting classes that are um, just talking about how to work with children, how to um, be in a home environment and really um, just the basic needs of parenting. That's really what it comes down to, how to handle stressful situations, especially in this pandemic. We've seen, um, you know, everybody's feeling the stress, everybody's feeling heavy. Um, and so we just really try to break down parenting and just give some help, helpful hints to provide for parents to have a, you know, normal working environment for children to thrive in. Yeah, are we seeing more cases of uh, domestic violence during a pandemic like this? I would love to say no, but yes, we have seen a huge increase in need um, as far as um, actually just needing our resources. But yes, we have seen an increase in domestic violence. Um, in March and April, we were very silent. We um, couldn't get a hold of anybody. Nobody was reaching out to us. We did feel that a lot of victims were trapped at home with their abuser. And so we are seeing now, um, since the summer and things, we are starting to see more and more people that are needing our services and are reaching out. You expect that to carry over into 2021 as well? Um, we do, most definitely, especially since we had that little lull. Um, and the holidays are always very busy for us. It's a very stressful time and add the pandemic on there. And I feel like our numbers will be, unfortunately, very, very large. Talk about how important it is to have a facility like the Safe House. Um, you know, we, you'd be shocked to know what's happening to your next door neighbor and to the people in your community. Um, it is extremely important that we continue on and keep sharing our mission and raising awareness for this issue because it's not easy to talk about and we really just need to provide for these people and be able to get out there and let people know what we're doing and know that it's okay and that we're here to help. We've got about 20 seconds left. Uh, if people need your service, how do they go about contacting you? 
Sure, so they can reach us on the website. Um, we recently just added a chat feature that they're able to speak with an advocate 24 hours a day. Um, and that website is www.mitchellareasafehouse.org or they can reach us by phone at 605-996-4440. And we are located at 1809 North Wisconsin Street here in Mitchell. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Ashley. Thank you, you have a great day. You too. Well, still ahead, many people have lost friends and relatives during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is especially difficult during the holidays. When we come back, we'll show you how people in one Kelloland community are helping each other heal. Well, families across Kelloland are getting ready to celebrate the holidays with an empty chair at the table. COVID-19 has killed more than 1,200 South Dakotans. Each and every one of those people is being remembered at a Kelloland church. Kelloland's Kelly Volk takes us to Mitchell, where a colorful memorial is helping people grieve. More than 1,200 ribbons can be seen waving in the wind outside of Congregational United Church of Christ in Mitchell. Each piece of fabric represents a life lost. As I've cut all these strips and tie them on, I've been doing a lot of praying. Wendy Figland is the church ministry assistant and one of the people who came up with the idea to create a memorial for COVID-19 victims. I want us all to remember, remember each of those people and pray for the, those that are left behind and those that are still suffering. And I think uh, the motivation for this and the desire to, uh, to share those, those sentiments and the prayers um, is definitely, uh, definitely heartfelt and, and something that uh, this congregation can, can really embrace and um, be thankful for. Church members put up new ribbons every week. Wendy never thought this many would be needed. We're going through a lot of fabric. Two of the ribbons are tied in honor of her family members. Hurts. We haven't had a chance to grieve properly yet as a family. Um, because getting together was just not safe. She wants other families feeling the same pain to know they're not alone. We are all mourning with them and that God is there for them even through their pain and will uphold them. And it's the hope that each one of these ribbons can help provide that comfort. In Mitchell, Kelly Volk, Kelloland News. And we have for today, be sure to join us every Sunday following the 10 o'clock news here on Kelloland TV.